Hey, good morning. Uh, we're out here today in Westminster, central London. We're on the embankment at the moment and we've got something pretty cool planned today. We're going to go on this. This is London Eye. Uh, so this has been here since basically the turn of the millennium, uh, back in sort of 2000, 2001 time. A special kind of commemoration of that, much in the same way as the O2, the Millennium Dome. So there are special procedures to follow, we're going to go and check those out. It's a 24.50 pre-booked ticket, £31 on the day. Bit of a tricky one though, because at the moment you do need to pre-book a day, date and time. So we've booked for 11am. Looking over there at the moment, it looks pretty busy. We don't know what the procedures are going to be like in terms of being in the pod. You're probably going to have to wear a face mask, but we'll check that out. I'll put a link down in the description to purchase tickets. Follow us along, hit the subscribe button, the bell icon, you'll be notified when we post all the new videos. Let's go. So we're in line, we scanned our annual pass to get in. Um, we booked, we did a pre-booking. Pretty good, they've got, they've got announcements, they've got people stopping you as you enter the queue for uh, keeping your face mask on, they've got sanitizer everywhere. We did ask, there'll be six to 12 people per pod, they say. It's just two of us, so we're probably gonna be with another group. Booking with the Merlin Annual Pass, we went in the fast track line as well, which is pretty cool. We've had already queued up, we're at the front already. And that was about four minutes in total, the whole thing. So as we round up uh, nearing the top actually, if we look down the river here we can see the Canary Wharf area. Central Pain right now we've got the Shard and if I'm not mistaken that's the tallest building in London. To the left over here we've got St Paul's Cathedral, Waterloo train station. Over here we've got the Houses of Parliament, Westminster Abbey, just down the back. We've got in Central Pain, uh, what's normally basically referred to as Big Ben, but Big Ben is the bell. The actual tower itself is called the Elizabeth Tower. So we get some pretty good panoramic views up here of all of London, and we're now at the highest point. Downing Street is just down there. Buckingham Palace and Pall Mall in Central Payne. And just down here uh, where you see the orange patch, that's where they'll have all the horse parades and everything in front of the Queen. Big Ben currently covered in scrim and scaffolding, whilst it's being worked on. And that's supposed to be like that for the next couple of years. So that was a little bit of an interesting experience. Um, personal recommendation. If you are uncomfortable with the current pandemic, the social distancing guidelines, wearing a mask, or you feel uncomfortable uncomfortable being close to people for obvious reasons don't do that 
whilst they've got procedures in place which are pretty good as we were coming off we saw them cleaning the pod in front of us so they are cleaning cleaning as best they can and checking for any litter and things like that as people are getting off but we had 12 people in our pod from four different groups and obviously in those circumstances it's very difficult to socially distance because the pods aren't huge and then you've got people coming up wanting to take pictures and rightfully so you're paying a premium to be on the experience you want to get your shots um, but I don't think it's worth coming now now I'm gonna date this video when I'm putting it up as October 2020 don't come until the pandemic is lifted because you won't enjoy your experience but down here there's some pretty cool stuff we've got Shrek's Adventure just here we've also got Sea Life we've got London Dungeons um, you can get a dual ticket to go on a cruise down the river with your London Eye ticket that's a pretty good deal and like I said there's a link in the description to buy all the tickets pre-book everything now we're gonna go back up past Westminster behind us and uh, this area is usually absolutely crowded and it's very quiet today uh, we're gonna see what else we can see in and around this area all right so we are about to walk down the mall and this is the this is the route essentially essentially one block back from the river straight down to Buckingham Palace two armed guards on the front which nicely are interacting with people joking around being friendly and either side we've got a guard on a horse as well as you come through the archway you're in the horse guards parade and this is where essentially the name says it all really they do a parade on here all of the horse guards this will be set up with seat in the queen will be here watching members of the royal family okay so we're now here on mall approach straight down the end here Buckingham Palace let's uh, let's walk up here check out some some of Buckingham Palace see if we can see the Queen see if she's in residence the flags flying high actually so I think that signifies that she is so we're not gonna see her but that would be cool if we could if she came out and waved on the balcony or something not gonna happen but um, we were just discussing like Pall Mall this is effectively on the Monopoly board, it's like the blue. It's pink. It's pink. It's pink. Oh, making a mistake. So Mayfair is blue. What's the other blue one? Park Lane. And Park Lane. Okay, so but Pall Mall is still pretty high up there, right? This road is closed off at the moment. That's why I'm walking down the middle of the road. I'm not. I don't do this typically. Pretty cool scenes on here. London Marathon goes through here. I think you get Formula E racing through here as well occasionally. Um, what would be really cool is if they actually did Formula One here because they've got a lot of space um, There was an episode of Top Gear Way back when uh, With when it was Jeremy Clarkson, Richard Hammond, and James May and they did an episode where they pulled all of Anything British that they could find any British motor vehicle that they could find and they lined it up all down here I'll try and put a link up in the top corner to a video of that. It won't be my video it'll be someone else's video but it's so cool to see there's a lot of people that say stuff isn't made in Britain anymore and all manufacturing's being taken to China stupid things like that but this was a good it signified that there's still a lot of stuff made in Britain and it was really patriotic typically British I wonder what's going on here. There's someone else coming now. We've got another one coming. 
Obviously this is a, it's not something I want to jinx or anything like that, but I can imagine this is kind of like a hive for potential tourist, uh, terrorist activity with people wanting to cause problems. We got another police car coming up just behind us, so we came off the road for obvious reasons. So we've got a bit of information here about the change in the guard. And when they walk down the mall, this is the differences in the guards. And it happens between 10.15 and 11.45 a.m. Uh, which I think we've just missed actually. And that'd be why the road was closed. Here we've got a map of the entire area. So we've just walked from here all the way down. And obviously, as it says, we're here now. South and West Africa gate. So we're gonna go through here, walk around here a little bit and give you guys some shots here. Um, slight mistake on what I was saying before, the change in the guard happens at 11 a.m. but the road is closed between 10.15 and 11.45 because it can take up to 30 minutes. It happens at 10 a.m. on a Sunday. It's a Saturday today, so. This is where we originally came through. You've got the horse guards here. And this is the horse guards parade. And like I said, you'll have seating set up to watch those parades. You've got St. James's Park here as well. This is the Queen Victoria Memorial. You can see Queen Victoria up there, gilded gold statue. And yeah, Queen Victoria in central paint. Got all the statues. Keeping an eye down the mall. And then you got a view right down. And going straight through the centre, you've got the grand reveal of Buckingham Palace. So this is normally pretty rammed and it's not very busy at all at the moment, really. If we go up a little bit closer, the guard over there doing his thing. And then you got another guard standing on his post. It's both armed. And armed guards, obviously. What a cool, one of the cool facts that we just read. Um, strangely, and uh, I feel sorry for these guards, they are on either a 24 or a 48 hour shift. They stand in position for two hours at a time, then they have four hours off. So it's not a job that I would like to do, but, mad respect for them doing this. That's a little bit of a view of Buckingham Palace. Pretty cool place to be, obviously. Very much British heritage, Bissau history, royal family. You don't get that a lot anymore. So, you know, it's, it's something to be proud of over here. We'd love to go and do a tour, but we've, just found out they're probably not happening at the moment anyway but it only happens between July and October we'll try and come back next year and do a tour that's a long old wait for you guys on a video I'm not setting you up with a coming soon trailer or anything like that but I want to come and do it so we're gonna come and do it um, 
horses. And now we're going to leave this area. We're going to... They're very majestic horses as well, actually. They're very, very nice. Very nice. Uh, we're going to leave this area. We're going to go and get some food. The place that we're going to go is a curry house. And I think it's called Ichiba Coco Curry. It's pretty much a pick your own kind of curry place. You choose the amount of rice, choose the amount of sauce, choose the, the spicy level of the sauce, and then you pick your additions. So whether you want a beef curry, a chicken curry, whether you want a hamburger, eggplant or aubergine or whatever you want to call it. Crazy things like that, but it's very customizable. So it's really cool. We're gonna go there, take you guys along with us. Hidden squirrel. Come back down here to James Street, and this is where we were a couple of weeks ago when we came from Madame Two Swords. And I put a link up in the top corner for that video. We went to Madame Two Swords and went to a place called Slim Chickens, which is just two doors down. The place we're going to go today is Curry House Coco Ichibanya. So. Like I said before, this is a customizable curry house. You pick everything that you want every step of the way. Let's go inside and uh, have some. Typically, uh, the first time I went to this place was in Thailand, actually, uh, in Bangkok. But they're all over, all over the world. Uh, you've got them, Thailand, Indonesia, Japan. There's a couple in America as well, over in California few in Los Angeles so we've been to that one been to them in Thailand been to them in Japan been to them in California this is the second one to open in London let's go inside so this is the menu like I was saying you select your curry so you select the type of curry meat vegetable seafood other toppings quantity of rice and obviously you've got a scale on how much rice you have there the sauce and the spice level of the sauce. And then you can get some extra toppings. Also got a little kids menu. So, katsu and vegetable, sliced beef, pork, dumpling curry. And then these are, these are the extra toppings here. You can get a hamburger, seafood, beef, Japanese barbecue, and then like an egg, mushrooms, things like that. Going into the vegetable section, so it's quite good for vegetarians. Eggplant or aubergine, tofu, spinach. Seafood section. And then other random things. So you've got a scrambled egg curry, gratin, and a garlic uh, cheese naan bread. Probably gonna have one of those, no and Becky. <laughs> Omelette curries, which is weird in my opinion. And then salads and whatnot as well. So you've got some kind of healthy stuff. Milkshakes and smoothies and just ice creams for desserts it looks like. Hello like I said, um, all over the world, basically. I opened the first one in Japan in 1978. Which is crazy. So the guy's been around like 40 years. China, 1,000 restaurants in 2004. Taipei, Taiwan, Korea, Thailand, Hong Kong, LA, like I said. Singapore, Indonesia, 1,400 restaurants. And then the first Halal one, Inkins in September 2017. The first one in Vietnam in August 2018. And then this is uh, 
like I said, the second one in England. Right, so as I said, fully customizable. So I've gone for slightly less rice, which you can see just underneath. Fried, lightly fried chicken, a hamburger, dumplings, and one up level of spicy curry sauce, because I'm not feeling like I can handle a lot today. Quite jealous of Becky, she's got quite a lot more curry sauce than me. You do have a lot more curry sauce. I think your bowl's bigger than mine. Do you reckon? Yeah. Uh, okay, maybe the bowl's bigger. Yeah, she might be right. Um, so she's got the chicken dumplings and a pork katsu. So we're going to share this, give some thoughts after, and let you know how it is. But I'll also let you know the price, but it's come out quite quickly. They took us up, we were waiting five or ten minutes at the front for people to leave. And they took our order there, so we've only waited at the table for two minutes, which is a really good idea, actually. We also ordered a strawberry smoothie and a cheesy garlic pita naan bread thing. Um, I think the price is adding up quite quickly on this, so I'll let you know how much it costs in a minute. Now come in a place called Dice, which is a bubble tea milkshake crepe place. It's the menu. So we've gone for milkshake, chocolate. chocolate milkshake, and I've gone for a matcha bubble tea. Came to 11.80 because I've got tapioca pieces as well. This is the best part of getting bubble tea. Ah, look at that. So, got bubble tea, hand comparison. It's not big. And then. And then we got the chocolate milkshake as well, same size. As you saw inside, it's really pretty cute. Oh no, that didn't work, did it? No! <laughs> <It's done. laughs> oh, I it everywhere now. So we finished up in the cocoa curry place and we've come to get a bubble tea from Dice. Cool place, we're on uh, James Street still. The curry, it was £41, 75p for everything that we had. Very expensive actually, I'm pretty sure it's cheaper in Asia, but you're in Asia at that point, so everything is naturally a little bit cheaper anyway. But it was really nice, the staff were super friendly, and the food tasted pretty good as well. I'd recommend going there, um, but don't have too many added extras because that's what adds the price up. The burger that I had was 450, so that immediately adds basically an entire sandwich if you're going for lunch to your meal or something, you know. Um, but we had a good time on the London Eye. A little bit scary in terms of social distancing, things like that. Going down to Buckingham Palace. It was cool that the Queen was in residence. Very quiet there as well today, so you really feel like you can walk around and just chill, basically, rather than being bombarded with people. But if you've enjoyed following along with us, hit the thumbs up, it really helps me a lot. I do appreciate it. Those YouTube algorithms. Hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon to be notified when we post new videos. See you on the other side. Thanks.